I've been joined by Richard Hammond. Hello, here I am. No needed for an introduction, really. You all. So, Richard Hammond, please tell me a bit about what you're doing here this year, because I think this is your first year. This is first? the first time I've been to Carfest, um, and it is great. It's a fabulous atmosphere. I'm here because I've brought my car restoration workshop to Monte Carlo, and we've set up like a complete workshop. A whole building and everything. Yeah. I've brought Oliver, which is a little yellow cadet that I drove across Botswana 22 years ago. Um, I found a matching car, the same car, which we're calling a living Scarlet Red, which is a bit of a mess, it needs restored. So we're going to restore that car over these three days and on Sunday, driving both around the track together. But it felt like the right thing to do because this is very much a family kind of show. So that and we are going to keep check on how the progress is going, so look out for the next video on that. We'll see if it actually does make it round the track. Yeah, if it's going badly, I'm not letting you. <laughs> Fingers crossed it makes it round the track. But I mean, you're here, it's car fest. It would be rude not to talk about Metamotors, right? Yep. Let's reminisce for a minute. We're going to take a quick look at what we think are your best clips. how I used to feel before we became bestest friends. This is, um, and then <laughs> multiple. <laughs> I've been to the same school of cup holder manufacture, though. Look at this beauty. Yeah, it's the kind of thing that would finally make you talk in a torture chamber. Whatever you say. I've had enough of this. Stop. That's what we thought were your best moments. Thank you. Is there anything that stands out for you? And you've like that kind of, oh my God, I'm actually doing this. Um, I loved it for the um, freedom and independence of it. So I, I mean, I, the way I've done, I've been working in radio, wanted to get into TV specifically around the cars, but there wasn't as much telly there. This was a long time ago. And so I got a job in PR, working for a car who with the intention of getting to know the editors of all the car shows. And I did, I got to know a guy called Big Baby, who was running them. Yeah, he, he said, I think you do a bit of a And uh, so I let him do it and started. And it was, we had to put food in uh, We weren't overburdened with budget. No. no. So we'd go, and there might be uh, Mike Brewer who's doing drift at the time. Yep. He'd turn up with like a full crew and all the people and all the equipment. It would be me and my mate Stan. And we had one bag each, only his bag, because we'd be away for a week, also contained not only his socks and shirts, but also all the camera equipment and sound equipment. And he was sound, camera, director. But it was great, because we could just do it. Mm. And this is, that's funny, this sounds so familiar. That is YouTube stuff, yeah. that's how it works on that's YouTube. Right. But it didn't in those days, and nobody made TV like that. You had to have all these layers of boots. Whereas we just had a bag with his socks and pants and camera. And a couple of ideas, you'd go out and do it, which was really exciting. Yeah, it's the raw kind of side. Yeah, it's it a great way to cut the tea. Yeah, it's a great way to cut the tea on, yeah. on television because all of the value is in the ideas. And then look where that ended up. Going through those six, seven years with Bella Yeah, yeah, yeah long time. Then off to Top Gear. That's the one. And then. Well, I'd, I'd been auditioned for Drew and then not got it. No, okay. And Drew again, not got it. But and then top, I auditioned for Top Gear. Top Gear was the one. I was, I went to the audition in 2000. Thanks. Yes. But that was, I turned up in my left hand drive completely ruined in I 11 AC, my WTT. It was a ruin of a car, but I loved it. And did the audition. My agent called and said, uh, You're not. 
What else are going to do? Because you're meeting the people and I met Richard Porter, who was and still is a sort of writer for that show, and Jeremy and Andy Wilman and the rest of the crew, and just I rang her on the way home and said, they're going to have the most amazing time. And then it wasn't for months that they called. I was in my basement office in my little house and I jumped down the basement and knew with my wife was wrong at the time, Jackson. And the phone rang, it was before the telephone told you who it was. It's a proper phone with a thing yeah. and a curly wire. And I just looked at the phone and said, that's them. And there was a guy called Gary Hunter, who was the executive producer. And he just said, oh, is that it, Jackson? Yes, it is. Uh, I'd like you to join our team. What? I've got the job. And that person put the phone up and then rang him back and said, Are you sure? The little fella lives in Shell Brum. Yeah. Brilliant. What do I do now? Well, come in next week. And that was it. And then round tour. Yeah, absolutely. And now you've been doing it ever since because you've got to do anything else. No, I mean, listen, the, the, the passion for cars is still alive in me. It's weirdly more than it was. And you think after how many years it is working with and around the but I still adore them and the whole subject because they are the providers of everything that you need beyond the shelter. The moment you step out from your cave, if you need a maid, friends, supplies, food, water, experience, everything, you have to move and to do that you need a car, which is why they've become symbols that become, you use them to demonstrate what we care about. And it's why now, when they're undergoing reinvention, it's been quite clear. We're not getting rid of them, we're reshaping them and reinventing them. When they first were invented, they were just involved in the original. Now they're defining their world. And now we're saying, okay, we can't keep digging up fossil fuels and burning them because we'll wreck the planet. So we've got to look for alternatives. Well, well, far from being bad, that means this is the most exciting time there's ever been to work in the automotive industry. It's fabulous. Yeah, it would be amazing. Can you imagine where we could be? There's so much more to talk about. If you think what I was doing, Men and Motors, every year there'd be the launch of another rash of hatchbacks, and you'd have to try and say, oh, this is brilliant, because it's got, I don't know, it's got a different screen on it or something, and that was it. Yeah. Whereas now, you've got electric cars coming along, hydrogen fuels, so hydrogen combustion, synthetic fuels, all of these alternatives, which, let's be clear, are all going to have to work together, because no one of them can replace everything. You can't only have we can't, there aren't enough minerals in the world to make the cars. The carbon footprint of making the cars will take thousands of years to offset. And distributing the electricity, how it's generated, we've got to get it to source, it would be a massive carbon project. So we need that. We need alternatives alongside it, be they synthetic fuels as a means of storing renewable energy and distributing it along existing infrastructure, or we need hydrogen combustion where applicable, or we need hydrogen fuel cells. All of these things will work together. And the good thing for you and me and for you is that means the roads will be exciting and vibrant and thrilling and we'll have choice and that's what we need. We need the choice to find the means of getting around and living our lives that best suits the context of our lives. It might be a small electric car. It might be a beautifully restored Mark 1 Ford Fiesta running on synthetic fuel. There's no carbon footprint in creating the car. That's already done. Mm -hmm. The synthetic fuel can be made using renewable energy and distributing along existing infrastructure. That might be the best thing for you. I don't know. You'll have the choice. Find yeah. the best way that fits you in your life. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. It's choice. exciting time. Yeah. yeah. Most exciting so, there's ever been. So exciting. Well, I've got one final very important yes. question for you. Yes. Okay. Think about it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's my thinking face. It's not indigestion. That's thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would it take to come back to Memorial? Now, before you answer, okay, we're prepared to call it the Chicago. And we've mocked up the logo. That's that's very kind. I, you didn't go too far on the logo, did you? I think you did with the end. You didn't over you didn't overtax yourself. Your budgets haven't we improved have much, have they, since we, I was on it. We didn't have much logo. On the plus side, the apostrophe is in the right place. That's a possessive apostrophe. I'd like to congratulate you on that. Seldom seen um, operated correctly. Well done. Um yeah, well, look, we'll do something. And I, I now own and run Drive Tribe, so we're messing about on YouTube as well. So yeah. we should, we should, we we should get it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's not contractually <laughs> binding. Of course not. Of course Very nice to see you. I'm so, we glad will talk. I'm so glad you're still going. Yeah, we're so glad to see you here this year. Thank well, you. Have fun. Have you a great show. You too. Good luck nice with you the uh, restoration. Thank you. And we'll keep tracks on you while we're here. We'll keep trying. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much. Thank Take care.